Sage, my fellow freedom lovers and sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitted from the beautiful Swampy Mangroves of South Florida, and today's date is Tuesday, December 8th, 2020. Wow. Yeah, so um, someone posted on Facebook 40 years ago today, John Lennon was shot by Mark Chapman. Many people believe the deep state was involved, but Chapman denied it in some mainstream past um, past interviews. Plus, Diamond Daryl, the guitar player, metal guitar player for Pantera, got the other band's name, Smack Me Later. <laughs> wow, passed passed as well in um, two thousand and four. That was 16 years ago. And it's interesting because it happened on that same, those, the, those things, those two horrific instances have something in common on that date, December 8th. Very similar, some horrific instances happened on September 11th. All you gotta do is look it up. I, of course, we could talk about what happened in New York, Pennsylvania, and the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. And, of course, the, um, they call it the Meadow, uh, Va- uh, Meadow Valley Massacre. Happened in 1871, if I'm correct. Or 1870 on September 11th. They did a movie about called September Dawn. And, um... According to some people that live there, the movie's not completely accurate, but the main objective, the main idea, objective, was true. And of course, in Chile, the overthrow of their government, which was under Operation Condor. Operation Condor? Yeah, Operation Condor, in 1973. So, always got to, have to look into that. On, on December 8th on a numerology I'm not saying it's set in stone but um, very you know I was going to look at those things it's just sometimes things connect like you can, you can connect the dots but may their souls be forever free damage plan that was the name of uh, Diamond um, Diamond Daryl's uh, Daryl Abbott's uh, other band damage plan so, um, yeah, so it was one of those areas, and I'll be very frank because I worked in the club scene and so forth, did concerts, did multitask in a lot of areas, and um, even my mom, when she saw me, she just gave me a big hug and was like thinking about me because what happened, she wasn't paying attention. So, um, always gotta, like I said, live once, my friends, and value it, and always love your neighbor. And I digress. Well, speaking of loving your neighbor, there's, um, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Mainly is about countering the rules for revolutionaries and a firing of a singer. Firing of a singer, yeah, for um, performing an anti-lockdown in Vancouver. So um, we'll just um, take it do a couple sites here uh, to make it brief. Let's see how far this goes. It came out today, and this one here is written by Karen Benzer. Rules for Revolutionaries, a guide to understanding the radical left plan to reimagine America. Since the horrific death of George Floyd, events seem to spiral out of control. The American public is being bombarded almost on a daily basis with reports of large protests in major cities accompanied by rioting, looting, burning, assaults, and even murders. Observing these events unfold, the average U.S. citizen watching from the purport safety of their home might, be, might seem bewildered by the transformative events, the purpose of which is nothing less than a reimagining of America. To better understand exactly what is happening, let's take a cue from my revolutionary handbook. There are 10 rules to explain what the radical left is planning. 
It is nothing less than an overthrow of the American political economic system and, repla and its replacement with a socialist Marxist government, which will mean the end of the United States of America. Yeah, so they want to have an ideology that was funded by the Rothschilds and have, and, and have everyone and those real revolutionaries with that mindset have Palmolive hands because they I, 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 idolize this so-called late men, passing mentor. All right, so we'll continue on here. One, Inertia is fatal to a revolutionary movement. What does a great white shark have in common with a revolutionary movement? Both must continue to move forward or die. The overtures of the late 1960s movement are eerily similar to what's happening today. The problem was that back then, the revolution was centered around the anti-Vietnam War movement. One pe once peace came, the impetus of the revolution, revolution died out. The 2008 Occupy Wall Street movement had to zeal, but the cold winter months in New York were not conducive to this type of protest. The lesson, choose your cause carefully. Today, cause sabre is systemic, systemic racism and, and its offshoots. Recently, the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, declared racism to be a public health crisis. Talk about Twilight Zone, right? Do not, number two, do not identify your ideology by name nor state exactly what will you go, what will you do after you are in power. Speak only in vague generalities and use two, three, two or three, use simple two or three word phrases that the republic can identify with. Most Americans are far, far minded by nature and what, want to do the right thing. The terms such as socialist, communist, or Marxist generally have a negative con connotation and would not be well received by the populace at large. Do not look to antagonize them any more than necessary. The revolution will need its army of useful idiots for the future. Instead, use the terms such as progressive or social justice warrior to describe yourself. Other terms such as environmental justice, racial income inequality, redistribution of wealth, globalism, undocumented worker, and reimagine the police are also useful. These are far less threatening to the average American. Fidel Castro initially identified himself as a humanist only after he felt secure. In his new position, did he announce to the world, I am a Marxist-Leninist. And that he was a glam boy, too. I have a friend of mine, that's from Cuba, there's some people, told me his father was a 33rd degree, free, 33rd, 33rd degree Freemason, used to steal his neighbor's cattle and, 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 and his ranch. So, what were the, the Castro brothers? Spoiled rich kids? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. A bunch of glam boys. I'm sorry. I don't respect that. Three, the revolution must get control over mass media and the education system. It is a historic fact that once... In power, every single communist or fascist dictatorship closes down all op oppositional voices. The truth is defined by whatever the revolution say, says it is. And anyone who dares speak out is immediately silenced. The only information heard and taught is what advances the revolutionary cause. This was true in Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union, just as true today in communist China, North Korea, Cuba, and Venezuela. This point cannot be stressed enough. Once the revolution gains control over mass media, it controls all the information that is decimated, disseminated. And once the revolution gains control over the education system, it controls the future. Okay? So, like cancel culture caters to Orwellian snowflakes. Yep, they're a part of that. And what's funny, too, when you see Antifa... And Nazis, they all go at it. And they will put the finger on Nazis, but Antifa is exceptional. That's double speak. They both support tyranny. There's a difference when you're liberty minded. You can understand all of those angles. But many folks had to pick or choose a side. You're with us or you're against us. Something right out of Pol Pot's playbook with the Khmer Rouge. 
couldn't use in his children. Four, all the apparatus of the state, the ministries, civil services, the justice system, the military and law enforcement must be brought under control. The rule is simple. Whatever the revolution cannot control could eventually be used against it. Hitler, Stalin, and Mao all dealt with the problem of supposed any revolutionary activists by instituting a series of purges aimed at crushing all potential opposition, which extended even to family members. Stotland himself is alleged to have remarked that it was fine if innocents were punished along with the guilty because that sends an even stronger message. Five, all vestiges of the old must be destroyed in order to build new. This include all history, traditions, culture, and iconography that cannot be made to conform to new ideas. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. George Orwell's quote in 1984. Yeah, so some people walking their dogs, which is all well and good. <laughs> in the late 1950s, Mao unleashed the Cultural Revolution on China. It was based on a rep- reputation of what Mao called the Four Odes. Old ideas, customs, habits, and culture. Estimates vary as to the number of people killed, but it was also, it was almost, it was most certainly, excuse me, most certainly in the millions. Coming as it did after the disastrous policies of the Great Leap Forward, China was left an economic and cultural wasteland. Something right out of the New World Order playbook many, many years ago. Destroy culture, heritage, and individualism, and everything else. Six, conventional ideas about religion and family are a anth- an anthema to a revolutionary movement. We, ha- we have created a child who will be so exposed to the media that he will be lost to his parents by the time he is 12. That was David Bowie. Absolute loyalty to the revolution must come first. This extends to one's family. Children are encouraged to inform their, on their parents. If they hear anything, they can interpret it as counter-revolutionary. Organized religion must also go. The revolution cannot have loyalty to God supersedes loyalty to the state. Seven. Revolution can only succeed in times of extreme economic, political, and social unrest. This is an important point. A generally content, gainfully employed, and prosperous populace is not likely to support a revolutionary movement aimed at overthrowing the government, party, or individual. This has provided these benefits. The order for the revolution to be successful, the population must be brought low and kept in a state of abject misery. Years ago, former White House Chief of Staff and Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel stated, never let a good crisis go to waste. Activist actress Jane Fonda brought this up when she noted, COVID is God's gift to the left. Yep, another New World Order, Uncle Tom and Angel Mama, both Emanuel and Fonda. Yep. Eight. Ultimate victory in the revolution will go to that segment of the revolutionary body that is best organized, best financed, and most ideologically dedicated. A revolutionary movement can be composed of a number of divergent groups, each of which has a peeve with a central government. In our country, we have, among others, minorities, LGBTQ, and feminists all rubbing shoulders with liberals, Socialists, anarchists, globalists, Islamists, and hardcore Marxist revolutionaries. The last group is the best organized and funded. They are completely devoted to the righteousness of their ideology and even have their own paramilitary group, Antifa. Their ultimate goal is to complete the the destruction of the American political and economic system. They will settle for nothing less than total power, which they will use to impose their will on all aspects of life. We all know, too, funded a lot of them, a good amount of them are funded by George Soros, the Open Source Foundation, the Rothschilds, etc. And there's a big list you can find yourself, you'd be surprised. Nine, a majority of popular support is not needed in order to force your will on an entire population. Most people assume that any revolution must have popular support in order to succeed. 
This may be have been true in some cases, but not at all. Bolsheviks swept into power in Russia in November 1917 with a simple slogan, Peace, Land, Bread. Although one cannot be certain of the precise number of hardcore committed communists among the masses of disaffected citizenry, it would have been comparatively small. 10. After the victory, the revolution will turn in directions not initially anticipated. Once the revolutionary genie is let out of the bottle, it will be difficult, if not impossible, to control events as they transpire. In addition to exacting revenge of their opponents, revolution usually turns on many of the very people who were its most adherent, ardent supporters. Only one has to look at Hitler's Night of Long Knives, Statlin's Gulag, Ar Archipelago, and Mao's Cultural Revolution. For example, fresh revolutionary Pierre Vergenaud is um, expressed this idea when he noted there is a reason to fear that the revolution like Saturn might devour in turn each one of her children. Revolutionaries also speak in lofty terms about justice and equality, promise a, castle, a classless society, but in reality wind up creating an entirely new class of elites based on party loyalty and affiliation. Here are here then are my rules for revolutionaries to better understand today's America. An important point is that regardless of who is in the White House, violence in the street will not stop. The radical left is already looking to extract major concessions from the incoming Biden administration. They want something for their, import, for their support. If they don't get it, they are prepared to take it to the streets. That will leave the new administration with two choices. To either put down the insurrection by the use of force or appeasement, offering bribes and concessions in, ho in the hope they will be platicated. The problem with the latter approach is that appeasement as policy generally does not work with only prolongs the inviolable confrontation. Winston Churchill said an appeaser is someone who feeds a crocodile in the hope it will eat them last. When then does this leave us as a, as, as a nation? There is no doubt that as a society we have a, made enormous strides in the last half century. Yet we, will, we are still struggling to come to grips with our past. 60 years ago, the election of an African American with the unlikely name of Barack Hussein Obama to the highest office of the land would have been impossible, as would be the election of a number of minorities and women to seats in the House, Senate, and even the new president-elect, VP-elect, which she is null and void, by the way, okay? Not a natural-born citizen, all right? Do we, no do we now throw all that away to and adopt the failed economic and political system of our former Cold War adversaries? There is no perfect economic or political system, but there are systems that generally work better for more people than others. As imperfect as, imperfect as it is, capitalism works better than communism. A capitalist system encourages innovation, individualism, personal responsibility, and independence. The stuff we had like mercantilism and government getting involved. Okay, so that's a form of cronyism, but it's called mercantilism. I'll just leave, I'll leave it there. Marxist systems mandate conformity of ideas, thought, belief, and speech. Whatever are many problems, a revolution aimed at overthrow of the entire system is not the answer. As for the revolution itself, George Bernard Shaw stated it best when he wrote, Revolutions have never lightened the burden of tyranny. They only shift it to another shoulder. So you can look at this way. The more things change, the more it stays the same, right? Remember, folks, government and Latin means control the minds. So all these, all these people say they want a revolution, want to destroy the system, and want to have things. The other places, you know what? You go there, and come. You go there and live. You don't tell me how to think, how to observe, and how to behave, etc. My rights are natural born, and at least I know one thing. I'm inspired to be here, not hired. Oh, you, a lot of the folks are being paid. I know there's a report on the Epoch Times. Looks like some of the local charts from Black Lives Matter are filing grievances now. 
because they're not getting fun. They're not. They're not being well funded. <laughs> hey, how's the field? If that's the case, how's the field getting screwed? Yep, the people you're supposed to look up to, they like to give you the ramrod treatment as well. It was even claimed that Fidel Castro took out Che because he was considered a threat. Oh, I, I think he's, he's, I don't need to use him anymore. Boom. Next. But some people say the CIA was involved too. But we have to, you got to decide for yourself. So um, it's, that's how it is. Remember, you know the truth, folks. You can be, you be set free and take off your adversaries. Hey, you know what would be, be great? Instead of screaming and yelling at these guys, get a big sign, a big post of Vladimir Lenin and Karl Marx go, property of the Rothschilds. Let's see how those clowns react. If they get, if they get offended, who the hell cares? That's the truth. And Karen Benzer did a good job on this. So, um... I believe she's from Florida. Interesting. I might have to look her up. So that's from newsreviews.com. We got one more here. And um, it says here, Canadian pro hockey team fires anthem singer for performing at anti, anti-lockdown anti rally. It came out today. It was by Anthony Murdoch. Uh, it says here, a popular anthem singer for Canadian professional hockey team was fired last Friday for singing the Canadian National Anthem at a Christmas Freedom Rally event held in protest against COVID-19 lockdown measures. My decision to sing at the Freedom event is not as complicated as dealing with the novel virus. It is reasoned and found out for my love for my fellow Canadians, said Mark Donnelly at the BC Christmas Freedom Rally 2020 on Saturday. Donnelly has been the pregame anthem singer for the Vancouver Canucks of the National Hockey League. Since 2001 until firing Friday, his website states, a signature performer of the um, Vancouver Canucks, Mark has won the hearts of hockey fans and all Canadians from coast to coast by holding the microphone to the crowd and encouraging them to sing along to his solid and unbashedly patriotic version of the Canadian National Anthem. At the Freedom Rally, he mentioned was concerned at the beginning of the pandemic and was willing to do his part to suppress the virus. However, this change after prolonged lockdowns continued to drag on. What was originally sold as a 15-day hunkering down sprint for the common good has turned into a 10-month marathon from hell, where the finish line is constantly being moved farther into the distance. There is no exit strategy. There is no defined rules of victory. As far as I know, there has been no overall cost-benefit analysis done on any of the protocol, said Donnelly to the crowd at the rally. Donnelly added that sports figures, entertainers, politicians, etc. are allowed to stand for anything for as long as it supports the narrative. You can support, you can support rioting, looting, destruction of livelihoods and reputation. But take a position against the narrative, you are worthy of exile or worse. As someone know for singing our great national anthem, I'm standing up against what I feel is tyranny, plain and simple, said Donnelly. Donnelly is a former opera singer and identities as pro-life. He has nine kids and directs the Shola, Devika, and Chorus Farnaste at the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, Holy Parish in Vancouver. Life, um, lifetime, life site news contact Donnelly for a comment, but on due to the previous work commitments, he was unable to respond in time before this report was published. He has, however, promised to send us a reply when he is available. When he is able, last Friday, the um, Vancouver Sun reported that Mark Donnelly was going to sing at the BC Christmas Freedom Rally 2020. The Sun's original headline was Canucks anthem singer Mark Donnelly to perform at Andy Master Rally. Shortly after the report ran, the owner Canucks Francisco and Quinley tweeted out at the newspaper. Should, uh, should change the headline of their report to say Donnelly was no longer working for the team. Hey, at Vancouver Sun, change headline to former Canucks anthem singer. Wear a mask, wrote Anquilly on Twitter. 
At the Freedom Rally, Donnelly mentioned that he was sure of his termination by the Canucks' ownership, but he does not use Twitter. He said he could not confirm at the time if this was true. Donnelly's fine was confirmed by the CBC reports that Canucks spokesperson told him in an email, you are safe to say this. his days are over. The NHL cuts the season short to 2019 and 2020 and resume playoffs in only a few hub cities without any fans for the coming season. The NHL has yet to announce that it will resume play and whatever or not games will include fans. British Columbia has banned all social gatherings as part of the COVID-19 measures and only allow gatherings of less than 50 people outdoors. They have also banned all in-person worship at churches. The province health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, said in November that she has no time for people who believe in that wearing a mask somehow will make them ill or is a sign of lack of freedom for those that oppose vaccines. So he sounds like another globalist angel mama, right? Absolutely. In October, Dr. Stephen Malthouse, who practices family medicine in British Columbia, made headlines for writing Dr. Henry to blast the government's COVID-19 lockdown policy. He also told Life Set News recently that Canada's low flu rates this year could be a variety of reasons. But that to see such a drop in flu numbers from flu shots, when he said at the very most are 60 percent effective, seems unlikely in his speech. At the Freedom Rally, Donnelly mentioned Dr. Malthouse's open letter to Dr. Henry encouraged those in the crowd to read it. Donnelly also touched on the godforsaken PCR test, which have come to question, into question by some as not being a reliable way to diagnose COVID-19. Without, what about those cases before COVID? A case with someone who got sick, not simply having the virus, said Donnelly to the crowd at the rally. Not every positive PCR test is the case and one if the one person has a multiple COVID test are the positive that chalked up as multiple cases interesting so interesting there but um yeah almost done here so just bear with me so um multiple cases Mulhouse said life life set life site news are PCRs that they are an accurate means of diagnosing virus agents of infection at this point, since no one knows for sure what COVID is or not, or is not. Since PCR is completely inaccurate as a means for diagnosing virus against infections, we really do not know what is COVID-19 and what is not. They said that before, good grief. There is a great overlap of symptom patterns with COVID and flu and influenza-like illnesses, pair of influenza viruses, Baltel's told LifeSite News. Province of British Columbia has a population of around 5.1 million people. As of today's list, 9,050 active cases of COVID-19 with 492 deaths attributed to the virus or just 0.0096% of the population. Opposition to COVID lockdowns in Canada has intensified over the past few weeks after the provinces introduced tighter restrictions due to an apparent raise, rise in virus cases, rallies, have held, have been held all over the country. Recently, it saw Ontario Independent Member Province of Parliament Randy Hillier charged for organizing as well as attending an anti-lockdown protest. Premier of um, Ontario, Drug Ford, said in November that he expects families to avoid holiday parties or large family dinners for 2020 in a politically correct announcement about holiday season safety that did not mention Christmas at all. Recently, Manitoba's Premier Brian Pallister said that he is the guy who is stealing Christmas to keep people in his province safe from COVID-19. On December 3rd, the JCCF released a bombshell charter analysis called Flying Blind, which shows how the Canadian provincial government's own data indicates that COVID-19 lockdowns have caused more harm than the virus. Flying Blind explains how risk posed a COVID-19 have been characterized. Government have relied on speculation, exaggeration, estimates to justify charter violating lockdown policies. Read the analysis. Read the analysis. Well, it's very disturbing what happens here. What's going on in the brothers up in the great white north. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? As far as I'm concerned, 
the Vancouver Canucks organization can stick it up their rear end, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, another bunch of globalist hacks. So everyone, should, everyone should go in there. Do you give them to see the Cedar salute? Or have your fist in the air and go, yeah, uh, I uh, you should be saying the National Hockey League. You should be called the Nazi Hockey League, right? Under the Vancouver Canucks, of course, the Nazi League or the Marxist League. Okay, so Marxist division. That's how you gotta look at these things. They should have their own division. Okay, all go in there, bend over, and have your fist in the air, or do the see the salute and go. We hate freedom. We will serve you. That's what I got to say about the organize, 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 the, organize the club of um, the Vancouver Canucks. It's disgusting, repugnant, and unacceptable. That's how I see it, folks. I say support Mr. Donnelly by any means. I think he's going to do good anyway. He, he, he has talent. People will hire him. If the other leagues don't, give, don't do it, they deserve the middle finger as well. And, and even they should do a song on telling Justin Trudeau is a globalist butt boy. All right? That's how I see it. And all the other ones that support this tyrannical protocol. So that will be it. I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. Furthermore, I will leave the footnotes of this episode on my speaker page. And if you want to contact me, you can hit me at lookyluck3 at gmail.com or lookyluckNumbers03 at protonmail.com. Support news reviews financially if you can and life site news. If you want to send me some contributions, you can hit me at paypal.me forward slash lookyluckNumber3. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.